the field of lung cancer is quite confusing. I mean, there's more and more uh, information that we're trying to discuss with patients. And so I decided that it was really unfortunate that a patient should have to make important decisions uh, that they didn't have any help except us discussing it with them. And so I, I became interested in how they made decisions and whether we could make that process easier for them. Yes. So I, I realized then that there was this uh, shared decision science and in my university there's a shared decision making core within the cancer center but also across other centers. And so I became aware then about these patient decision aids and so I, I wanted to design one, but I also wanted to get patient feedback on whether this sort of thing is, is helpful because if I'm applying for a grant, which is my long-term goal, uh, not so long-term, I'm hoping short-term, but I'm hoping to have a grant so that I can design these patient decision aids and get them used in day-to-day -day practice. Um, and so I felt that it would be helpful to have a patient survey to say that, yes, this this is the sort of way I would like my information to be presented to me. And, and so what were uh, some of the main findings in the survey that you conducted? Well, I think it was that the majority of patients felt that there was a problem with not having sufficient information. The majority of patients uh, want to make the decision with their doctor and with their family in a shared way. Um, but only half of them felt that that actually occurred. So this is a fairly educated group, and yet they felt that they didn't have enough information and they weren't making the decision with their doctor. Right. And so knowing that, what do you think is the opportunity now in terms of having a decision aids and um, what might a good shared decision aid look like for these kinds of patients? Right. So I wish I had one to show you because that is obviously a very visual format. That's the key, and it's only several pages long, and most of it is just visual. There's, there's a, a, a small percentage of writing. Um, so the idea is that a patient could look at it and easily understand that, rather than talk about percentages, it, it shows you in a visual way what are the, um, say, survival of one treatment versus another. And it shows, let's say, the other important thing might be a certain side effect. Well, it's presented in a visual way so a patient can see, okay, they're about the same or, or they're not quite the same or there's a big difference. It, it isn't something that has to be presented as a, there's a 60% chance, you know, they can see 60 people in a visual format. So, yes. so I think that is my next step, is to design ones not just for radiation oncology, I, I am a radiation oncologist, but I, I, I think it isn't, um, it isn't a, a something that you have to be uh, a medical oncologist to design this. I, I would sit, uh, I think what I would want to do is sit in on discussions between a patient and let's say another specialty, which I I don't represent, but to understand where the focus of the discussion is, what are the difficult things that a patient might have to know about having that treatment, so that I can then work with, let's say, a medical oncologist to, say, present chemotherapy versus immunotherapy. I, I don't think you have to be the content expert, but you have to be an expert perhaps in how to present the information in a way that's the most easy to process. And, and be happy enough with your decision, uh, not regret your decision.